So now we've got the mileage method. I multiply the 6,000 times the point, or they do, <laughs> 1, 5, 8, 5. And that comes out to this, if I add those two up for the two halves of the year, 7,260. Uh, and then depreciation portion of the mileage is, they're breaking out the depreciation portion versus the, the uh, expense portion and so on when they're calculating the mileage method. And then here's the actual cost, gasoline repairs, insurance, and so on and so forth. And the big one is the depreciation, which includes the section 179, which could be a big bump uh, to, to, the, to the expense. So that gives us total expenses. And obviously we'll take the larger of the two in this case would be the, the actual method. Now, if I compare and contrast with what the software has given me between these two, I'm looking at these two lines and I say, this is the actual method being used. Let's force it to use the percent method. Before I do that, by the way, let's jump over to the depreciation schedules. So now you've got your, your depreciation schedules here and notice it took this big, it, uh, one, it wasn't one, it was the special depreciation, another big thing that allows you to take a lot more depreciation in the first year in, in an attempt to stimulate stimulate your mind man. the economy and stuff and also just because politicians it's a popular thing to do because right? it's beneficial so then we got that but next year uh if i go to 2023 then we still have a significant amount over here but you'll notice it's all it's a lot less than the first year because we got that massive uh upfront depreciation it's still front loaded and that means that the depreciation is going to go down substantially the amount of expense we get from year to year uh, under this method. So that could be a, another thing to consider when you're first putting it on the books, because possibly what if the first year of operations, you didn't have much income, right? Like if your income was quite low, you only made like 30,000, then your, your rate, your tax rate that you're paying would be quite low as well. So maybe you don't want that big, massive depreciation in year one, Maybe you would rather have it in later years when you're planning on your income being higher, where you're subject to more, uh, more uh, tax, higher tax rates, right? But in any case, let's go back on over here and try to force the other method so we can see the difference between the two. So here we go. So I'm going to say, do the standard mileage method. Do the standard mileage. So now it's only at uh, the 7,000, 7,320. So substantial difference between the two. Now notice if I brought this way down though, like I can add, I can either say, well, I work like crazy and I have a lot of miles, which might increase the mileage method in relation to the, the direct method. Or I might say, hey, look, what if I just bought like a used truck for like $10,000, then it becomes a lot uh, different of a calculation as well. So then if I go back on over, I'm going to say, boom. So now it's still calculating at the 7,000 with the standard mileage method. But if I remove that and let it pick the method, it's going to pick the higher of the two. It's still higher for the, the, the direct method. And that's the one it picks. But we got to be a little bit careful of that one because although that's quite beneficial in this year, it's not a whole lot higher than the other method, right? Because the other method was coming out to... If I put a two there, it was coming out to 7,003. And this method is coming out to the uh, 89396. But if I go to my depreciation schedules down here, I can see that, that let's see the regular ones, that it took this massive special depreciation all of it in the first year right that means next year i'm not going to have anything right and so next year uh there, there's going to be no depreciation so it takes all all of the depreciation in the first year whereas if i was if i was using the mileage method i might be able to clear total depreciation over the life of the vehicle that is actually higher than the cost of the vehicle or the basis in this case of the 8,000, right? Because I might be able to, I mean, if I was using the standard mileage method, I might be able to take this, I might be able to take the, the 7,320 for like 10 years, right? Whereas if I took this direct method, I can only get the depreciation portion of the direct method in like 
the first year. And you can see why that's a problem for the IRS allowing you to say switch between methods, meaning if you take the direct method in year one, you're likely to you try to take advantage, of course, why wouldn't you take advantage of the, the special depreciation or at least the accelerated depreciation instead of having a straight line kind of depreciation method. And therefore you took a bunch of the depreciation in the first year. So you can't, you know, the IRS is gonna be skeptical of you then switching in year two to then to the mileage method where you're where you're basically get a get a more substantial you know you would have front loaded all the all the benefit that's the point of the special depreciation and the accelerated depreciation methods and then still get the benefits of the auto afterwards that's why they're kind of skeptical of switching between one or the other now again notice that the other thing to just kind of keep in mind here is if 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 I had a substantial amount of income over here, I would rather have the deduction in year one than later years. But notice the deduction isn't limited to that 8,000, really. I still get this deduction up top, even if I'm using the actual method, my gas and that stuff. But this one is kind of limited to the, the value, the cost of the vehicle. Whereas if you use the mileage method, it's not exactly limited, right? Because the mileage, because you might be able to keep taking the same deduction going forward. and Notice what our tax rates are right here. Just another thing to keep in mind, the marginal rate uh, and the effective rate because we had a fairly significant amount of income. But if my income was a lot lower, let's say that we had Schedule C income, This, let's say our expenses, let's just bring the expenses up to 80,000. So that means that now on the Form 1040, we only had like 30,000 pulling in here and my net income is, is only 12,393. So now if I go to my tax rates over here and I say, okay, let's look at my, let's look at my uh, tax summary. My marginal rates are, are 12, 12 and the effective rate is 45. It's kind of skewed because of, of uh, the different self-employment tax and whatnot. But that's a, a big difference on that average rate, the 12 versus over here. Over here, I had it at, what did I have it at? 20,000. It was at 22, right? So there could be a big difference in the taxes depending on if you have a, a if you're at higher tax brackets. So if it's the first year of operations and you're putting the truck in place, in other words, and you had like a loss or, or if you had like a low income and you're expecting next year for your income to be much higher because you've got things all dialed in at this point in time then it might not in that case it's one of the exceptions to the rule that we would rather have the deduction up front right that might be saying i don't want the deduction up front if i can get it next year because i expect my tax rates to be way higher next year because my income's going to be higher next year and because the government's getting crazy in debt. So you would expect them to increase the tax rates like crazy at some point in time, once they realize that they're stupid. But so that's another reason that, that you, you want to keep in mind between those two methods. So if you plug into the software, in other words, the two methods, it'll kind of give you an idea of which method is best. But you can't just take you can't just think, well, which method is best in this year, you also got to think, well, what method would be best over like the life of the use of this car and, and considering I'm gonna keep my business going next year and take into consideration income levels this year and in future years.